Hey everyone, I thought what we would do today is go over this problem. I gave it for a quiz a couple weeks ago in my solid mechanics class. So what we're going to do here is we're going to determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross sections at points D and E of the frame. All right, so here's D, here's E. We've got this applied load here, so there's like a cable there. It's 150 pounds. We have a distributed load, 75 pounds per foot. And then we've got this right here. And this one is going to act like a two-force member. All right, so that'll be important to recognize that when you're doing the free body diagram. So first of all, let's go ahead and let's do the free body diagram of this whole part right here. All right, so A all the way out to the end, because we're going to need to know some of these external um, forces before we can find the internal loadings. So let's do that first. And this problem, by the way, is out of the Hibbler book. All right, so there's our beam. And now let's put our forces on here. So at A, we've got a pin. So anytime we have a pin, we put the X component and the Y component. And I just always assume the positive directions, even though that might not be right, but that's what I always do to start out. And then next we've got that part right there, a little two-force member. So since it's a two-force member, we're just going to have a force that looks like that. You could also draw it going down if you wanted. And I'm going to call it FBC. And then next to that, we have this distributed load. Now, remember when we have the distributed load, you're going to be given this intensity, which is um, 75 pounds per foot. So if I want to get this as a force, I need to multiply by a unit of length. So we're going to do 75 times the length that this distributed load is acting over. So we're going to do a length of 4 for right here. All right, so we're going to have 75 times 4. And that's going to act right in the center of the distributed load. OK, so this is 4 feet long. So it's going to be, you know, two feet over from B or from that end, however you want to look at it. So let's just put two feet right here. And then finally, we've got the 150 right there. And that is at a 30 degree angle. OK, now the FBC right here, we're not given an angle, but you could find the angle if you wanted, or you could recognize the fact that you know, this right here is 3, and then we have 4, so that's going to give us a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And then we could use that instead of finding the angle. All right, so now we have that, and let's put our distances on here just so it's complete here. That's 3 feet, and then this is at B. So this right here will be two feet. All right. So now let's go ahead and find AX, AY, and FBC. All right, I'm going to go ahead and find all three. We might be able to get away without needing all three of these, but just to make sure everything is completely done, we'll go ahead and find it. Find all three. So let's look at the X component. To the right's positive. We've got AX, which is positive a negative FBC. Now remember, we want the X component. So we're always going to use the side of the triangle that's parallel to the direction we're looking at. So 3 here is that side that's parallel. And then we're going to put it over the hypotenuse. So we're going to have negative FBC times 3 over 5. And then we've got the 150 here. Now that's positive, so it's going to be plus 150 sine 30 set it to zero. All right, I can't solve yet, right? I have two unknowns. So let's keep going. We could have started with the moment equation first. I just started with the y equation without really, or the x equation without really thinking about it. All right, a y is positive. We've got a positive b c component. Now this time I want the y component, so the 4 is parallel to the y direction, so I'm going to do 4 over 5. And then we get negative 75 times 4, and then negative 150 cosine 30. Set that to 0. 
Again, can't solve yet. I've got three unknowns now, two equations. So lastly, let's do this moment equation. And I'm going to pick the moment about A because that has two forces going through it that are both unknown. So let's put uh, the moment about point A. Now if I do that, I'm going to have the Y component of BC. So it's FBC times 4 over 5, and the distance is 3. And that's going to be counterclockwise, so that's positive. Next, I've got the 75 times 4. That's the force. I need the distance. So what would the distance be? It's going to be 5, right? Because i got to go from here to here. And that is negative, right? Because it's clockwise. And then finally, I've got the y component of this force. And that's going to be negative also because it's going down. So we're going to have negative 150, and then that's going to be cosine 30, and then that distance is 7. So now we can start by finding BC, and then we can go up to these other equations and find the others. All right, so FBC will be 1,003.89, that's in pounds. And then we come up here. You can plug this in, get a y, so that's negative 373.21 pounds. That negative sign just means I chose the wrong direction here, but that's okay because this still corresponds to this diagram, so it's still correct. And then let's plug in this number here, and then we can solve for ax. So AX is going to be 527.33 pounds. All right. So now we've got the external loads. So now I need to work on doing the internal loadings. And let's see, we want D and E. So I want this point here and then this point here. Now remember when you find the internal loadings, you have the choice of using either side, right? So I could use this section right here, this left section, or I could use the right section. If we use the right section, I have to go from D all the way to the end of the beam, right? Um, and then for this one at E, I can use this whole section here on the left or this section here on the right. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with D. And I chose to use this little left section because it's smaller, there's less stuff going on there. Okay, so there's that. And we know we've got that pin at A, so I'm going to have AX, AY. Use the same sign convention you did up here, at least that's what I do. So AX will be 527.33. AY, I drew it going up here, so I'm still going to draw it going up, but I'm going to put that negative here. If you wanted, you could you know, flip the direction of the arrow and then make this number positive. I just prefer to keep everything the same as what I had up here. All right, now at point D, remember we're sectioning this, right? We're cutting this in half, so I'm looking at the internal loadings now. That means we're going to put a normal force like that. We're going to have a shear force, let's call it V, and then I've got a moment. All right, and these are at D, so you can put a little D subscript here if you want. Now, this whole um, frame here is in equilibrium, right? So if the whole frame is in equilibrium, that means this section here is in equilibrium. So now, if you notice, I've got these three unknowns. Well, since it's in equilibrium, we can use our equilibrium equations. So let's do that next. All right, so the x component here, to the right's positive. So we're going to have nd plus 527. Set it to zero. That means nd is negative 527.33 pounds. Right, for the y direction, we're going to have negative 373.21. Right, 
minus that shear force at D and then set it to zero. So V here will be negative 373.21 pounds. And just like always, if we get a negative sign in our result, that means we picked the wrong direction here. All right, but these signs here still correspond to this drawing, so it's still all right, still correct. All right, and then next, let's just find this moment here, the internal bending moment. All right, so now we've got that. And I always take the moment about the point where we're doing the cut, because then it gets rid of ND and VD there. So the only thing I have to worry about is this AY. All right, because this AX goes right through the point. So we're going to use this number here. Notice it's going to be clockwise. So it's going to be a negative moment. And then make sure you include that negative sign that we had for AY. And then the distance here is going to be 1. Right, and that's from right there. I didn't draw it on here. We should. There we go. Now what am I missing? I don't have anything to solve for yet, right? So we need to add in this MD. I just assumed it was counterclockwise, which is positive. Set it to zero, and then we can solve. So we get negative 373.21 pound. Foot. All right, so D is done. Now we can go ahead and go to E. Now remember, if you didn't want to use this section, which this is the easier section to use, you could have gone from D all the way to the end. But then you're going to have to include um, the BC force, the distributed load, and then the 150. So there's a lot more work involved if you use this right section. The left section's easier. Okay, so same kind of thing for point E. We can use this left side or we can use the right side. For this one, I chose to use the right side just because then um, we're only going to have the distributed load here and then the 150. All right. So there's my diagram. Here's the 150. It's at a 30 degree angle. And then up top, we've got the distributed load. Now on the quiz, several of my students didn't do this part right. So we only want to look at the part of the distributed load that's actually on this section we're looking at. So all I care about is from what's at this line and to the right of it. So this part right here, we don't need to worry about. Okay, so now for the distributed load, I'm going to do 75 times this distance here. So that's 3, right? So we're going to have 75 times 3. And several people missed that because they just did the original force, right? Of 75 times 4, but that's not correct because we're cutting off one foot of that distributed load. Now this is going to act in the center, remember? So it'll be in the center, which is like right here. So that's going to be 1.5 feet from point E. So now we've got that. And then let's put the internal loads. So we got our normal force, which remember just goes out. It's normal or perpendicular to that cross-sectional area there where you would section it. We've got our shear, which is V, and then we've got ME. All right, so now our x equation, we got 150 sine 30 from right here. It's positive. Nothing from this. And then we've got negative NE. It's going to be 0. So now we can solve. And NE is going to be a positive 75. So it's positive. I drew it in the right direction. Next, we go to the y direction. I've got negative 150 cosine 30, negative 75 times 3, and then negative VE. So that gives me negative 355.9 pounds. 
So negative here just means we picked the wrong direction here, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going. And then finally, moment. So let's take the moment about point E over here because it's got a lot of forces going through there. So if we do 75 times three, we need the distance, which is 1.5, and that's a negative moment, right? Because it's clockwise. And then last one we need to worry about here is 150 cosine 30. It's negative. And then that distance is going to be the full distance um, from E to the end. So that's going to be 3. All right, so if you want, you could put the 1.5 here. And then finally, I need to add in ME. I just assumed it was positive in that diagram. So ME then will be 727.21. Comfy. All right, so that's the end of that one. Hopefully y'all found that one helpful. And I will see y'all next time.